Let's talk about how to be bright, but not stupid. If you have a high IQ, don't make these mistakes. Today's insights are brought to you by the endlessly ominous orange octopus of obvious animosity. A high IQ is an interesting thing, loaded with its own pluses and minuses. If you have one, you have a lot of capacity to aim at the things you want to focus on. Thinking humans practice spotlighting, which is the act of focusing on the things you want to think about. This can make you exceptionally good at the things you want to focus on. The things you don't focus on do not take care of themselves, and a high IQ is no guarantee that you're even going to notice them. You could be brilliant at the things that you focus on, yet simultaneously surprisingly inept at the things that don't hold your interest. You could be the guy working out a complex poem or an intense mathematical equation even as you walk into the wrong apartment or miss the toilet. Two examples to which I absolutely cannot relate. Here are five potential downsides to having a high IQ and how you can mitigate against them. Problem one, social isolation. High IQ individuals tend to suffer from outsider syndrome. Here is a clever way to handle this problem. In order not only to promote your own mental health and your chances of mating one day, but also in order to live a pattern that is optimal for mental productivity and generating ideas. The cleverest and most strategic people typically practice immersion and extraction. It's not a Kama Sutra term. It could be, but it isn't. Highly sociable people like to practice full days of immersion in the company of others. The chances are very likely that that's not for you, and it doesn't have to be. You will actually be at your most mentally fertile if you practice shorter periods of intense immersion followed by withdrawal and isolation. Join a club, Toastmasters or Mensa. Join a church, a book club, a mastermind group. Do something that forces you to deeply immerse yourself in the company of others at least once a week, possibly more, and then withdraw to your own mental space. Go for a walk, spend a couple of hours alone. This formula of intensive immersion and extraction turns out to be the optimal balance of stimulation and time to think. Do it by design or it doesn't happen. Problem number two, the belief that no achievement is sufficient. Your friends and family are staggered by what you do, but you hold a loftier mental image, a greater picture of what it is that you're aiming at. Consequently, you can spend a lifetime feeling vaguely disappointed in yourself even as you perform at an exceptional level. Remember to keep this one in perspective. Just like wealth, achievements mount up over time. They accumulate. As a global average, people's wealth tends to go way, way up when they reach their 50s, 60s, and beyond. Provided you keep doing the work, the same happens with accomplishments. The slow pace may feel mortally frustrating, but provided you are applying your intelligence and putting in a full day's work each time, the results will multiply greatly over time. Your discomfort is healthy. It compels you. It propels you. Just don't let it crush you. You are working on it, and it will add up given time, provided you don't suffer from the next one. Problem three, chronic laziness. It's easy, right? Always has been. So why work at it? Actually, there is an answer to this question. Because you are not merely a calculating machine. You are also obliged to develop character. And a less intelligent person with greater character could outperform you. Does that sit well for you? The hare being beaten by the tortoise. IQ is only a resource. You have to apply your resource. And that's the beginning of the development of character. Do the work. If you don't, what's the point in having a high IQ? Under such a dynamic, your high IQ is actually a liability. Now isn't that a thought? Problem four, grinding your gears. Psychology Today puts it this way, high IQ individuals are more apt to have anxiety issues. They tend to think more about the negative things that happen to them, ruminating and replaying scenarios to learn what went awry. They may attend to or obsess about matters that others would view as petty or inconsequential. And there again, you see how a high IQ can actually become a liability. The solution is simple awareness. Know thyself. If this is you, use self-talk to put this one back in perspective. The thing that you're worrying about? 
take five minutes to worry about it and time those five minutes, then dismiss it and do something else. And in particular, do something productive, something creative, something that drives forward and moves outward rather than sitting and wallowing and going in smaller and smaller circles within your own mind. Use your great resources on a productive alternative. Also, don't neglect the stress-reducing basics. You know them. They're exercise, sunshine, sleep, and sex. You can even combine them if your local park has flexible standards. True story. Problem five. This one is very similar to problem number four. You can expend all your energy into your head rather than out into the world. Congratulations on the storms of magical poetry and far-reaching ideas raging inside your cranium. But if you keep them locked in there, you dissipate their energy inwardly. This happens a lot. Stephen King advises writers not to tell anyone about their story, but simply to get on with producing it. When you tell people about your story, you dissipate the necessary creative energy. You've already done that creating. The same thing tends to happen with high IQ individuals without even another party being present. You talk to yourself about the things you think that you want, your goals, your accomplishments, the things you want to do, and having done that, you've dissipated the energy. Doing is more powerful than inwardly fixating. Apply your great resource outwardly, not just inwardly. You have a massive landscape of percolating ideas. Force them out into the world. Do the work. A high IQ is a stunning resource. It's a finely calibrated tool prone to jiggling its own bolts loose from time to time. So remember, with great power comes the potential to be a bit of a fruitcake. Once you're aware of these potential problems, you can intelligently mitigate against them. I will mitigate against them. No endlessly ominous orange of obvious animosity. Blah.